G'day guys. Uh, in this video I'm going to be talking about a few travel tips, uh, especially those travelling with a disability. Now, as most of you know, I've had MS for quite a while and over the last few years I've been travelling around the place. So here are a few tips and tricks I've learned along the way. Now, whether you're travelling with a disability or not, some of these might be a good idea. So stay tuned for my tips and tricks to travel. So the first thing I suggest we do is to get a good night's sleep the day before we travel. Whether we're travelling through the day or whether we're travelling overnight, don't expect to get a sleep on board. We want you to arrive totally relaxed. So if you leave relaxed, you end up arriving relaxed, hopefully. So my next tip is to get to the airport reasonably early on the day that you leave. Now the earlier you arrive at the airport, the less stressed you're going to be. Now travelling is very stressful, so let's try and relieve as much stress as we can. So getting there early is going to avoid the worries about being there on time. If we're running late, if we have an accident or a flat tyre on the way to the airport, they're all negated. So just try and get there as early as you can. And if you arrive too early, then you can always sit and have a cup of coffee or a bite to eat once you get there. So you're nice and relaxed before you start your trip. Number three, the tip I suggest here is to dress appropriately. Wear some nice loose clothing something that can breathe and I like to wear slip-on shoes as well for obvious reasons. You can also carry a light cardigan or something on board just to keep warm on the flight. Sometimes the air conditioning can be quite cool but they also supply pillows and blankets so you can snuggle up to one of those as well. Now don't forget of course that when you are in the airports and in the airplane it's all climate controlled so wherever you're going to go just make sure you have appropriate clothing for when you arrive there. If it's going to be hot don't be wearing hot clothes. If it's going to be cool, make sure you've got something to throw over the top of the clothes that you've been travelling with, just so once you step outside, you're not going to freeze to death. Now, the next tip is tip number four. I want you to check in the luggage as soon as you arrive, just so you're not carrying your heavy baggage around the airport when you're having that cup of coffee or the piece of cake. Just carry on your carry-on luggage with you and check the other stuff in early. Now with your carry-on luggage, you need to keep it fairly light. I think most airlines nowadays have a limit of about 7 kilos, but what you will need on your carry-on is any books or your tablets or telephones, uh, plus a toiletries bag including a toothbrush. That toothbrush will come in very handy after a long-haul flight. A spare pair of clothes, carry a spare pair of clothes with you, uh, and obviously a spare pair of undies or two, just in case the luggage goes astray. And of course, uh, always carry with you your passport, your tickets, any travel vouchers that you have, etc., always carry that on your person and don't definitely not put it into the checked luggage. Uh, it's also a good tip to have a pen with you as well because there's forms to fill in as you go through different places. Now, tip number five. Look, ask for an upgrade. Why not? What have you got to lose? If you ask for an upgrade when you check your baggage in, there might be spare seats that's not filled in the business class section, so you might be lucky to get a trip through business class. Maybe it's a good idea to join the airline frequent flyers club because those people get upgraded before the others, obviously. Also, seat allocation. You can do that online beforehand uh, and you can also ask if there's any better seats once you check your luggage in. They'll have more of an idea of who's travelling that day so they'll be able to give you one with extra legroom. Some places charge a little bit extra for the extra legroom. Maybe uh, that's a choice you want to make, but do that if you wish. Now. The other thing is don't sit near the toilets if you can help it because it's going to have traffic coming and going all flight long. So you're not going to get a good night's sleep there. Now tip number six. I think that's tip number six. Um, don't be afraid if you have trouble walking asking for special assistance. Now I have trouble walking with a walking stick so I always ask for travel assistance uh, and they often give me a wheelchair. Sometimes I've been in the golf cart which is a bit of fun but it does save you all the stress of worrying about whether you're going to get to the terminal on time. They come and pick you up in the wheelchair, they deliver you to the aeroplane and I walk on board and I'm normally first on board which means you get the best pick of the overhead lockers uh, which is always a good thing. No queuing and no standing around pushing past people. Some places have a long walk between the aeroplane and customs. I know for a fact that Abu Dhabi has at least a kilometre walk from where you get off the aeroplane to where you pick up your luggage, so it's a great idea to have that wheelchair assist there with you at the time. 
Now the other great bonus is of course you don't have to worry about where you're going, whether you're exiting the airport or whether you're transferring to another flight. You get chaperoned through passport control and to customs and it's just a breeze. You just sit in the chair, the man pushes you to where you need to go and everything's done for you basically. It's a great little tip for those travelling and it saves you being stressed and again you're arriving nice and relaxed. Tip number seven. Now prepare your trip beforehand. First thing is to know how many stops you're going to have along the way, how long the transit time will be, and what time you'll actually get there as well. Uh, it's a good idea to charge any devices that you're taking on board with you, for example your mobile phone or your tablet, and load any ebooks or movies or music onto the tablet just for your onboard entertainment. The airlines do supply movies and TV shows etc as entertainment, so you have a great choice if you have your own as well. If you're a vegetarian, make sure you request a special meal, or if you have special diets, they can cater for that as well. But you do need to let them know a couple of days beforehand at least. So make that request online or through your travel agent. We're up to the last tip for the day. Uh, tip number eight, and that is to carry some cash on hand of the country that you're going to. Now, you can arrange this through your bank beforehand. Uh, you can actually get money exchanged at the airport, but be aware the exchange rate isn't as good there. And also in today's society, you don't need to carry traveller's checks with you, just load up your debit card with some cash and you can use the ATM at your destination or go into the bank and withdraw some local currency there. But you will need local currency for when you arrive, for taxis, for buses, for any tips, for drinks and munchies and so forth. So make sure you carry some local cash with you. Anyway, that's a number of tips there for you to use. There they are, the eight tips. You can go through those, use them if you wish. Uh, they're there for just a guide and things that I've learned along my way. So please feel free to use and choose those tips as you go. Now in my next video I'm going to be doing some tips while you're on board the flight. So if you'd like to click here and subscribe, just up there you can subscribe. Um, or if you'd like to click down here, you can actually go to the next video there that I've just suggested. So we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.